Christ like herding cats, thank you very much. Okay, uh, our next speaker of uh, the three is, uh, is Russell Bennett from Recruiter Hub. And, um, uh, I've seen Russell in action. He did some uh, uh, did the presentations for uh, I've seen uh, Manchester about a month ago, and um, uh, it was fascinating. So I'm sure you're going to really enjoy this one. So over to you, Russell. Thank you. Uh, no pressure then. Um, <laughs> get ready to be fascinated. Um, I'm going to talk about challenging traditional SME business models. Um, so I'm going to be challenging maybe how your teams are currently structured, maybe how you've had them structured previous session, and just talking about a bit more about learning behaviour and personal behaviour. I'll introduce myself first. That's me, just by the tree. Um, we'll start with who I'm not. I'm not the guy from Master Chef after the crash diet. Uh, but I did get approached in the street the other day and got told that my mum thinks you look like Eddie out of bottom. <laughs> so for those of you that are old enough, that will probably hit home now a bit, so, um, so the only way is up from here. Um, I established a business in 2009 called Recruiter Hub. Um, it's effectively a management consultancy uh, that works with SME recruitment agencies. Uh, we set that up in September 2009. Um, you probably won't have heard of us um, unless it's been word of mouth because we haven't really put ourselves out there as yet. This is the second time I've ever spoken publicly apart from at weddings. Um, the Academy is our, so I suppose, our flagship product. It allows companies to hire entry-level recruiters, um, attract them, hire them and train them um, up to standard. Uh, we got news on Thursday last week that the government has decided to back us um, for a 50% grant uh, for our Academy product. So it's the first management tool in the UK um, in the recruitment sector that's received 50% uh, funding through the New Growth Accelerator. Uh, so that's a pretty big win for us, which is great, um, but my word was the uh, process rigorous. Our track records, we've worked with 48 SMEs to date, um, varying from size of one plus a dog, um, up into our largest business, which has just broken 50 headcount. Um, 33 of which now use our academy, um, and we currently operate a 75.8% retention rate on trainees after year one. Uh, that's a bit of a, a claim to fame on our part, but actually our clients have done that because our academy um, allows our clients to train their own staff. So that's, that is their stat, not ours, but we use it because it's really good. Okay? <coughs> the first thing I'd like to talk about, um, and you may have seen the film, um, has any, anyone seen Moneyball? Uh, it's a baseball film with Brad Pitt in it, ladies? Yes. Good, there you go, we're awake again. Um, <laughs> Bill James was a statistician in America, still is, um, and a keen American baseball writer. Um, he applied science to the baseball um, industry and decided to start looking at the science and the formulation and the metrics around the performance of a baseball team to produce their end product, which was wins. Um, I'm a keen reader of Bill James's work because I believe it's very applicable to the recruitment sector in the fact that teams win and islands don't. Um, Personal capacity um, versus market demands. Um, this is going to be quite controversial, but in my opinion, 360 is pretty much dead as a process. Um, whether you like that or not, this is why it's intriguing and fascinating, because generally I get a load of abuse at the end of this. Um, but for me, personal capacity now and personal skill sets are key moving forward to build a successful recruitment company. Um, the islands, as we'll go down to, you'll see, um, represent a lot of recruitment businesses that are still trying to do things the old way. We've grown a number of businesses incredibly fast using this process. Um, one of our clients is in, in UK banking, so quite prominent for this morning. Um, and we've grown their UK banking team out from 18 to 32 in the last two years um, in a downturn. Um, the only reason why we did that was we stripped out their 360 model and got them working as a team. Um, we also hire into these teams based on character, attitude and learning behaviour and absolutely nothing to do with skill set. So just so you know, the traditional method of our hiring is very much around the function in which they're going to take on in the business and not the 360 role that they're trying to fill. So just to be clear on that. So can you just explain 360? Um, taking over the whole process, so I'm a social care recruiter and I do all the client aspects and all the candidate aspects, the account management, the new business and the attraction of the candidates and the delivery of those candidates. Thank you. So the full job. Yeah. Um, Ireland's one, a lot of businesses we see 
Um, if you don't agree with this, just imagine being on holiday. It's coming up soon, I'm sure. Um, a lot of businesses we go into, one recruits a Java developer or a couple of people recruit Java developers 360. If you're in the IT market, um, if you find a permanent Java developer of either British or European descent, you're rubbing your hands with glee. However, it's a full-time job to find these people now. So the Java developer guy here, in this case, is an island. He has nothing else to do with the team in the office, and as a result, he will pass or fail by his own demise. In other businesses, we see have recruit engineers, they recruit project managers. It's that ability to grow out 360 very fast, uh, which actually trips up the agencies, because um, where the relationship with the client is key and the relationship with the candidate is key, because they are the same thing, um, having 360 recruiters who are primarily perm-led, we all know and we've all experienced it as owners, when that money walks out the door on payday, it takes you about 12 months to recover, um, so succession planning is key to your business. There is also uh, an epidemic in the industry, which is the addiction to diversification. Um, two years too late is the first point. Um, I've heard about someone around the corner who's doing 20 grand a month on this desk. I think we should do it. The amount of times I've heard that in the last 10 years, and it's something I used to say as well. I used to put two or three people on it. <coughs> it's going to be the next big thing at the board meeting. Completely failed because I was too late. Um, a client of mine the other day, which I, I can't describe or mention who they are, thought that they were going to go and break the back of Australia at the moment in the engineering and construction markets. Um, that was an awkward board meeting, uh, to say the least. But uh, five, six years ago, maybe, but certainly not now. So we, we have a habit, a habitual habit, of maybe being too late to the market. The market, indeed, is, as Lindsay mentioned, you follow your clients, you understand the new technologies emerging, you find your markets within your current talent pool. Uh, dipping one toe in. When we do come to diversify, um, a lot of businesses test the market with a person or a couple of people. Um, my opinion is if you're going to do it, do it. Um, you need to put three or four people into that marketplace, plan it well, um, fund it well. A lot of people get a bit of extra cash in their business and then decide they're going to break into a new market to protect their business. What they're actually doing is burning more money than they actually have. And one giant leap for mankind. I'm just demonstrating, I'm jumping across the blocks again. Um, a lot of businesses I see try and do a lot of different markets. Uh, we met one yesterday. Um, they have eight markets and they've got six staff. Um, it was, again, quite an awkward conversation, but they now have two markets as from this morning. Um, we're going to start again. Um, so a lot of businesses, you normally see IT and pharma. There's, there seems to be a natural pairing that goes on in the industry. Um, HR is, is an area which people naturally assume they can just go into as well. Um, and then suddenly a driving desk turns up because they found someone and they do that in the corner and that makes a certain amount of money. So what you end up is it's a quite a disjointed brand and actually a business that does three or four different things but actually has no real market position or any real traction. Um, so for me diversification is literally an inch to the right. Um, your clients will tell you what else you can do with them and your diversification shouldn't be any more than that. Um, not to say that diversification boldly won't work, but you have to find the right people to do it and you have to put money behind it. Um, has anyone gone in and diversified boldly before and made it work? Okay, we'll move on. Okay, so the core functions of a successful SME. You've got to treat your business as a multi-headed consultant. So if you think of your staff right now, that could look quite strange if you put it on Photoshop and just had lots of heads sticking on the top of the body. But uh, unless you're addressing the market in the correct manner, so your clients are dealing with teams of people, your candidates are dealing with teams of people, um, I think you're going to really struggle in the next couple of years, in my opinion. Um, you've got to drive your contract and your perm line at the same time and they've got to be dedicated so whether you start with some consultants then create a division and then create a business whatever stage you're at but both those lines only work um, if they're dedicated so if you've got hybrid people at the moment you will need to break that model out later on down the line grow your staff into a model so once your framework is set your organizational structure is set you can then populate it with very brilliant people Skill set aside, you can teach skills, but bring in the right people for the right functions within the recruitment process. And this is a kind of work up of how we work with our clients. So 
Um, as you can see, we dedicate someone to a contract line, someone to a permanent line, and then we have a real engine room in the background that is constantly talking and meeting candidates who are also becoming clients. Um, key account management should be separated out. I'm sure we've all got staff that I wish they'd do new business. They keep sitting on that account and they keep doing 15 grand a month. But I can't understand why they won't do 20. If I was them, I probably wouldn't either. Um, new business and the development of new opportunity is a separate function now, in my opinion. Um, and this is down to the behaviours of the staff in your business. Um, you've all got consultants at the moment who are 360 recruiters. They're good at a couple of things, but they're not good at all three things. That's because of who they are. Um, they might be great delivery consultants working in the candidate pool, generating leads, information, people. But when they go to pick up a new business phone, they start shaking or they go and make 10 cups of coffee before they actually get going in the day. Um, for me, if you know your learning behaviours, which are activism, reflection, theory and pragmatism, um, your new business people are normally quite high activists. And some of you in this room will be high activists. Uh, there's normally a pragmatist trait, trait within those people as well. Good delivery people tend to be quite theory-led, quite reflective-led. Um, so they kind of combine as a team really nicely behaviourally. Um, so when you put a team of three together, so you imagine a contract consultant, a perm consultant, a delivery person underneath, the ability to work as a three in a market is incredibly powerful because every day, new business, account management and delivery happen day in, day out. When you leave it to a person to do it, they can only do one thing at once. So if they're in their market by themselves as well, God bless them. We hope they get through the year. Now I'm not saying 360 is dead, but certainly in the newer generations coming through, the market pressure is now at such a point where it would be very difficult for someone to hit a desk running at 360 level. If you have them, go and give them a pay rise and keep hold of them after. <coughs> So that's the engine room and that's how it works. From a, a retention perspective, um, anyone that leaves within that model, we have a simple replacement scenario. So instead of hedging your bets with a 250k biller on perm in, on a desk, who walks out the door on a Friday unbeknown to you, personal reasons, whatever it may be, you have the ability here where this team has spoken with your clients, they've spoken with your candidates. Your account director does not change every three to six months. Um, the ability of this team allows a client to feel comfortable and associate themselves with your brand. The key account management is a separate function. When you get a client to that size where it requires constant delivery, you dedicate a team to it in our opinion. Um, we go to our business, so all the opinions of this are definitely ours and our businesses. So how do you test your current business model? Um, what do your outputs need to look like? Uh, across all activities to achieve target. So don't just think about the desk, the 17 KPIs. Um, we met a client last week who's got 24 KPIs for their consultants. I wasn't aware there were 24. Um, we use three benchmarks. Um, do your staff deliver activity in new business, account management and candidate attraction daily? If not, your machine isn't working properly. Do you have a successor for everyone in your business, not just yourselves? Um, we all, we're going to hear about, I'm sure, succession today of the owners, the sale, the exit, etc. But do you have a successor and have you spread your risk across your business? And is your contract and permanent revenue line fully protected? Your perm line's always going to be hit harder because that revenue walks out the door every month. Uh, on your contract line, have you got the right model and the right momentum behind it? So these are the four fundamental tests you need to apply to your teams and your business. Um, and if you are considering diversifying, you should consider diversifying with at least three people in that plan. Okay? Any questions? Hello? Um, I'm curious about the separation out of account management for business development to show you the people that are in and talking to the customers are the best people to explore opportunities in business development. Is that just because your experience is seeing that those people are hunters or farmers and you can't blend the two? Yeah, the movement, <coughs> so to explain that, the movement between what we class as new business in this model, the ideal is to move them all to account management as that relationship feels left and right. So as your spend and your activity goes up within your client, they become accounts. And if that person is best suited to that client, they move over with that client. Right, so they keep, they keep the 
they killed. Absolutely, yeah. It would be um, detrimental to the business if we were then just to con effectively pull the accounts into one box. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for your time. <coughs>